see a lot of people on Twitter saying, not your fandom, not your problem. And I don't agree with that at all. So I'm saying I, I don't want to come down from you. We'll get lost together. Let me fight. Hey guys, it's Bree here. If you're new to my channel, welcome and welcome back if you're a returning subscriber. So first of all, I'm recording on my phone today, so I'm hoping everything comes out okay. If the quality is okay, definitely let me know in the comments because at this point, my phone is more reliable than my camera. So definitely let me know in the comments if the quality looks okay, if I look weird or not, just please let your girl know. But anyway, I'm really excited about today's video because it's been a while since I've done an unpopular K-pop opinions video. So I decided to kind of do like a part two of a video that I did like I believe a year or two ago and that is where I reacted to unpopular k-pop opinions from you might have guessed it reddit reddit can be a little controversial a little bit spicy so this video should be interesting i will be reacting to some unpopular opinions that i'm gonna hand pick from the unpopular opinions k-pop subreddit so before we get into this video though make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you won't miss any of my multi-fandom k-pop uploads and also make sure to check out my discord server at this time we have about 1700 members we're growing quickly we're very active it's a great place for you to talk to other k-pop Pop fans engage with my community and you can also talk to me and get to know me there as well now let's get right into the video all right so the first unpopular k-pop opinion we have here is for all of my end citizens out there my fellow end citizens mark's nct strongest skill is his songwriting so this user goes on to say what inspired me to make this post is his recent release sm station song child when the song dropped i saw many people talk about lyrics on twitter many hit tweets about his lyrics were made a lot of people said they could relate with the song well and they also include some lines from some other songs he's written verses for like go baby don't like it which is one of my favorite mad city city 127 yesterday and even chewing gum so basically this person is saying that even though mark is really known for his rapping and dancing his songwriting is his strongest skill when i look at the votes this is almost split down the middle and i think it's kind of because mark is so very well rounded when it comes to rapping, dancing, and songwriting. All of those skills are strong, so it's really hard for me to pick out the one that I think is best because he's so good. I would, I guess, say this is unpopular just because when people think of Mark, I think they might automatically just think about his rapping and then his dancing and not necessarily his songwriting, especially if they're a new end citizen and they're not really familiar with some of the songs that he does have songwriting credits on. But I have to say, this man's songwriting skills are strong. His first and Baby Don't Like It, which this user actually mentioned is one of my favorite verses out of all of NCT 127's discography. Probably all of NCT's discography, really. When he is writing a verse for a song, he really tells a story. I got that from Baby Don't Like It. I got it from Child as well. He's very talented, so I guess I'm on the cusp with this. But let me know in the comments, do you guys think that NCT Mark's strongest skill is his songwriting or do you think it's his rapping and or dancing? Definitely let me know in the comments because I'm honestly torn when it comes to this one. This is a really, really hard one. The next opinion, and this one is actually rated as too popular by Reddit, not unpopular. The best voices in K-pop are the ones that are easily distinguishable. I always see a lot of discussions about what makes an idol a good singer, and apart from the ability to sing live, most of the time people talk about technicality. However, in my opinion, the best voices are the ones that are unique and easily distinguishable. Voices that are so distinct that I can immediately recognize them. For example, Blackpink Rose, Red Velvet Joy, and Idol Soyeon. I think this opinion is unpopular because I rarely see anyone consider uniqueness as a factor for best voice. So like I said before, this opinion is rated too popular. Over 1.4 thousand people agreed out of the 2.4 thousand votes. I'm kind of torn about this one too. I think that easily distinguishable voices in K-pop are very valuable because nowadays I feel like a lot of companies go for the same type of voices 
like very bright, happy voices. Companies go for the same type of vocal tone. And I do really personally tend to drift towards V voices that sound so different as my favorites when it comes to idols. Just to give you a few examples, Taemin. Taemin's voice I think is pretty distinguishable. Jimin's voice is very distinguishable. I really like his voice as well. Boa, one of the most distinguishable voices that I can think of off the top of my head is Han Sung Woo. Also Jung Hyun, greatest of all time in my opinion. His voice is definitely very distinguishable. I haven't heard anyone that sounds like him in my opinion. So I do think having a distinguishable voice is very important in K-pop and I think that's why most people here agree. But I also do think technicality is important as well. I like listening to people that I feel like have um, good technical ability, have really good control over their voice, can do different things. So I do agree with this opinion, but I also do think that technicality is important as well. A lot of times in K-pop, when you first get into a group especially, you have a hard time distinguishing even the voices within that group, even the members within that group, just because I think companies go for the same type of voices. So it is really refreshing when you have an idol whose voice really, really stands out. Likes on a music video are much more accurate than views and showing popularity. This is unpopular because people focus on YouTube views way too much in determining success and popularity. Yeah, I definitely do agree with this because I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of companies, when they release a track, they buy views. And what I mean by that is they run advertisements on YouTube where you might be watching a video, you might see an ad before that video, and then it's the music video in question. So that can count as a view. Brands run campaigns where you might be scrolling through YouTube, you see a video on your homepage and you click on it, and that's because it's an ad. So a lot of the times the views aren't always organic. The view to like ratio is a better way to tell how popular or how successful a music video really is just because companies do various things to generate views when it comes to advertisements and things like that. So I definitely agree with this opinion. I don't really consider it unpopular because I think most people know this, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think this opinion is unpopular or do you think this is kind of like general knowledge when it comes to views on K-pop? Also, I think another point is there are some people that like just stream in music videos to get more views. So it's really like the same person just watching the video over and over again. So obviously if you're streaming from one account, you can watch a video multiple times, but you can only like it once unless you're making like multiple accounts. So in terms of like streaming parties, fandoms coming together and streaming, I definitely agree with this in reference to that as well. So the next one is I hate the step back choreo, GOT. There's something about it that just doesn't click right. This is my pity opinion divided in points. Like why are not all members dancing? The group is only seven members, but only three are on camera and dancing the majority of the time. The person, people who made it act like they are NCT Luna 17 and got out of ideas of what to do with the rest of the members. And the chorus formation, please, even Blackpink had a more interesting one for the stay choreo. The members covering their faces until their part comes gives me actor character yawning, causing the audience to become sleepy vibes. What's the point? I know who they are because SM told us. I can even set them apart by their outfit hair. This is not the grand reveal that they made it up to be and it takes away from the performance. Then they go on to talk about the camera work and they mention the whole controversy with the lyrics. Personally, I didn't really find an issue with the choreo, but I did find the choreo to be very ESPA-like in some ways, which might be why some people didn't like it. I think people complain about ESPA's choreography being kind of boring and robotic sometimes and Maybe that's how people perceived the got the beat choreo. To be honest though, I liked the choreo. I also didn't have a problem with the camera work at all. I'm looking at this and it looks like people are kind of divided, like about 211 people agree and 203 people disagree. I thought the choreo was pretty powerful. All of them are amazing dancers too, so I think the delivery was really good. But yeah, I get what this person is saying. I guess the intro where they're all like, have their backs kind of turned and you can't see their faces. Yeah, that might be seen as melodramatic because we all know who they are, but I didn't have an issue uh, with the choreography. I thought it was pretty cool and I felt like it fit the song, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. I prefer G Friends Apple over Mago. This was overwhelmingly disagree. Like most people disagreed with this and this is a certified unpopular K-pop opinion. I agree with this user. I love Apple. When Mago came out, I understood how like a lot of people liked it. It was their last title track. So I understand how like it 
it might be very meaningful to some people but as far as the song itself apple was definitely more my style from the song to the music video to the choreo i listen to apple way more than i do mago like to me apple was that song if i had to choose like which song would have been their last release before their disbandment i would have picked apple because i felt like it was a lot more powerful like yeah mago was good but apple to me apple is that girl i just prefer it better so i agree with this user this user goes on to say apple has this seductive melody and exploded catchy chorus the styling was on point they look like goddesses yes i agree it definitely has this like enchanting seductive melody the music video was giving me witchy vibes along with their styling user i'm with you i agree with you on this 100 so the next one is for all of my 18 out there and it is ATS's unofficial phantom color should be gold not orange and this is a very popular opinion it's rated popular not unpopular is official color official we don't have color but orange and black mm -hmm. yeah no, orange and yellow color uh, black color ga jeo rang jeo rang jeo rang but i'm a purple so this user is basically referring to an interview that ATs did with The Wired where they basically said they don't have an official fandom color but their unofficial color is black and orange and it makes sense because of the fireworks era. The debut album's colors as well so orange and black kind of made sense to the fandom to at which is why they kind of chose that. But this user goes on to say that ATs are pirates like that's their whole theme. I agree with them. They go on to mention the songs Treasure and Precious. When I think of pirates, when I think of treasure, I think of gold. So so I agree with this user. I get why the fandom, why Aitani said that the unofficial colors should be orange and black just because of fireworks and then their album art. But when I think of pirates, I think of gold. And I think that gold would be an even more fitting fandom color for Aitani. So Aitani, let me know, should we stick with the black and orange for the unofficial fandom color or should we switch to gold because they're pirate kings? Let me know in the comments. This one is marked as controversial. I don't think a song can be considered K-pop if there aren't Korean lyrics. Now don't get me wrong, just because I don't consider a song K-pop doesn't mean the song is bad. There are a few English songs by K-pop idols that I love, but they go on to say that they don't think that just because a song is released by a K-pop artist, that that automatically makes it a K-pop song. I have to disagree. I don't think the language is the only factor that makes K-pop K-pop. I think K-pop is multifaceted. You have the fact that the song is released by a K-pop artist, that a K-pop company is backing them. There are also certain elements in K-pop that are very K-pop. K-pop as far as like the visuals, the choreography, there are a lot of elements that you just kind of know or feel that it's a K-pop release. So I have to disagree and it looks like people overwhelmingly disagree with this opinion and they're saying it's controversial. I don't think that just because a K-pop idol releases a song in English that automatically makes it not a K-pop song because I don't think that we should put K-pop in a box to say that in order for it to be K-pop it has to be in Korean and no other element that makes it K-pop matters. So I disagree with this opinion and I do think that it's pretty unpopular. We need to give 4th gen artists room to breathe. This opinion is unpopular because I see people bashing groups like Espa and Kepler in particular for having a repetitive concept. I see people hating on Girl Crush so often it's crazy. It typically goes something along the lines of Kepler, Itzy, Esp, etc. are so repetitive. One black pink is enough. We need new concepts and yes it is repetitive I'll admit. I have a soft spot for Girl Crush and I see it way too often. And then they go on and give other examples. And they also say that we're giving fourth gen groups so much shit for literally playing it safe on their debut. I agree with this person. I think people are so hard on rookie groups and fourth gen groups in general. I think if a group is brand new, they're still trying to figure out their concept, what works for them, what their audience likes and what direction they should go into. So I really don't think it's fair to kind of like slam them when they've only had like one title track even specifically with Kepler's situation. I think it's like really not fair. I think that you really need to give an artist time to grow rather than just to hate on them. They're called rookies for a reason. They're trying to figure things out. Their companies are trying to figure things out. It takes some artists years to kind of find their sound that they can claim and that works well for them. So I definitely think that we need to remember that these are fourth gen groups. They are new groups and let them figure things out. Let them grow in their artistry. This one is controversial. Sometimes people need to stay out of it if they're not in the fandom. I feel like this is an unpopular opinion because a lot of people do this so my post might not be taken positively. So this person is talking about J from Day6, I guess at this point former member of Day6J, and they're saying that they 
are speaking from experiences of my day. They say that, you know, they appreciated the discourse between my days and their opinions and stances on supporting or not supporting Jay. But when they saw comments from some non my days that were just bullying him and not really giving constructive criticism or giving constructive discourse on the situation, they were basically like, this is not productive at all. That some non my days were even dragging day six, which obviously isn't okay. If you are in the fandom, sometimes you should just stay out of it. So this is my thing. I do understand that sometimes if a situation like Jay's situation occurs and you're not in the fandom, you might not have the full context to fully grasp the situation or understand all of the backstory. But I think as long as you're not bullying or just being toxic or not really adding anything productive to the conversation, I don't think being a fan or not being a fan matters. Like for example, I gave my opinion on the Jay situation I wasn't a fan, but I kind of took myself out of it and tried to look at it from like an objective standpoint. I do get what they're saying because I did see a lot of non my days dragging day six, dragging Jay, but I also don't think it's fair to gatekeep and say that just because you're not a part of the fandom, you just don't have any say because that's kind of ridiculous, right? At the end of the day, it's freedom of speech. If you have an opinion on a controversy, you're a fan of the idol or not, you can still say your opinion. Of course, there are going to be some people that are annoying and that might use situations like these to bully an idol or drag them down or kick them while they're down. But that's just life, unfortunately, and you can't really control that. And you can't use that as a reason to say that non-fans can't give their opinion. And I'm actually surprised that a lot of people agree with this. Um, I disagree. I don't really consider it an unpopular opinion because I see a lot of people on Twitter say like, not your fandom, not your problem. And I don't agree with that at all. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think if you're not in the fandom, you just shouldn't talk about an issue? Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, guys. So that wraps it up for reacting to unpopular K-pop opinions from Reddit. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section what you thought about some of these comments, whether you agreed or disagreed. I'd love to see your thoughts. Also, let me know if you'd like me to do a part two where I react to more unpopular K-pop opinions from Reddit. If you liked this video, make sure sure to like it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. You can also check out my Patreon if you want to support my channel, and I do encourage you to join my Discord so you can talk to me and my community. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!